Hi, I'm Troy, and welcome back to another On the Road video brought to you by ApplianceVideo.com. Stop. Before beginning any repair, always be sure to disconnect the power to the appliance. It is also recommended to test the outlet for proper voltage. Remember to also turn off the water. Today we're working on the Whirlpool French Door Refrigerator. We're going to go ahead and replace the fill valve for this unit. The current situation is we have good water through the door, but we do not have any water to the ice maker. When we test the ice maker, we have 120 volts coming from the ice maker to the fill valve when it is filling. The ice maker rotates and goes through a harvest, but when it's supposed to be sending power down, it's sending power down to the valve, but we're not getting any water into the unit. We've already checked that we have no clogs in the fill tube, and since we have good water through the door in this unit, we know we have good water pressure coming to the unit. The tools you'll need to complete this repair are a quarter inch nut driver and potentially a tack puller or flat blade screwdriver. So now we got access to the back of the unit. We're gonna go ahead and unplug it. With the unit unplugged, we're gonna remove all the screws holding the unit in place. Now, the cover's gonna come loose now, but we're gonna remove one more screw, and that's the screw that's actually right inside here. That is actually screwed onto the valve, so we're gonna remove that screw right now. So now the valve is loose, and you'll notice when you take that screw out, it is a different type of screw than the ones that hold the back cover on. So just make note of that. So what we're gonna do now, we have it out, and free, we're gonna go ahead and pull it a little bit. We're gonna take the wire, or the uh, plug, and slide it up and out. Be careful the edges so you don't cut yourself. It can be sharp. Water's been turned off. So now we're gonna go ahead and remove this line from this fitting. Chances are you're not gonna be able to get enough downforce on here to push down to remove it by hand. So I use a tag puller or a flat blade screwdriver, and basically I'm gonna come and push down on the valve so I compress that blue part down and lift up on the water line. We're gonna set that aside. With that off, we're gonna now be able to go ahead and pull this part out. We're gonna go ahead and remove the two power supplies to the valve. Once you've got the harness off, of the valves. The valve is now free because we unscrewed it. We're gonna go ahead and remove this cover right here. Once that cover's off, we're gonna take these two lines off. Again, both these lines are probably gonna have some water come out of them. So we're gonna go ahead and set our paper towel bag down below it and compress the yellow part and pull the line out. Once that line is free, we're gonna now go ahead and compress the blue part and pull that line out. It's got water that's coming out of it because it's just draining out of the system going up to the water dispenser. So what you can do now with that, with it like this, is you can go ahead and take your new valve because the water's gonna drain for a while. You can either let it drain out and get all the water soaked up or what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and install my new valve right on there fairly quickly to this larger line. So now what we're gonna do, my thumb is covering the larger of the two lines down here. So, we're gonna, so what we're gonna do now is take and put the line that my finger's on and put it in the blue fitting, which is the larger of the two holes. You'll notice the, the size difference. And we're gonna ins insert it into here and push it in and then we're gonna, gonna go ahead and connect the smaller quarter inch line. Once 
Once you have that one in, the water will stop coming out. You take your quarter inch line and feed it back up through the guide if it came out. Once it's in there, you push it back into the valve. Make sure it's in all the way. With that being in all the way, we're now gonna go ahead and put the valve back into its slot. Once the valve's back in its slot, this is where I go ahead and install the screw to hold it in place. Once that screw is back in place, we're gonna come back around to the other side of the cover. We're on the other side of the cover, we're gonna put our harness back on. The harness only goes on to one of the two spots. You have a smaller set of terminals and a larger set of terminals. And they are color coded. You notice this is an orangish yellow color. It goes to the yellow valve. This one is a burnt orange, brown type color that's gonna to go to the red valve. Once you have those back in place, we did knock off the cover. This is a cover that goes down and protects the water lines coming through from any heat. And we're gonna go ahead and install that back onto here. It basically clips right on. Once that's in position, we can now go ahead and slide the cover back partially into position. Once the cover is setting back partially where it goes, you can take the power cord, slide it back. Into its groove slot and slide it back down. Again, be cautious of the edges so you don't cut yourself. So we've got the harnesses on, the water lines connected on the inside. We can now position the cover back to where it goes and put the screws back on that hold it in place. I'm gonna put them back in so we can have this secured where it goes. You may have to slide it ever so slightly. I would start one on one side, and then I would come over to the other side just to make sure that I'm in a square position. And now you can put the rest in. Now this particular unit was short one screw that went in here, because I have one screw left that goes here, which that screw goes to the retaining clip for the actual water feed line. So now that we have the back is secured in place, we're gonna put this back into the valve, into our last and final port. Put it into the spot, make sure you push it all the way in. So it's all the way down and then it's secure. Now we're gonna take the final screw and put the strain relief back on the unit. Once that is back in place, we're gonna go ahead and plug the unit in and turn the water back on and allow the ice maker to cycle from there. You, at this point, depending on where your ice maker actually is in its harvest cycle, you may need to um, either A, wait and let it go through its harvest cycle on its own, or B, you can go ahead and manually uh, advance the ice maker so it'll go into a harvest cycle. And once we're plugged back in and put back in position, we're gonna see if ours is in that position or if we're gonna have to manually cycle it ourselves. So now what we've done is we've turned the water back on so we have water coming to the unit. We're gonna observe, make sure we don't have any water leaking here. And what you're gonna to wanna to do at home or in the field, wherever you're at, is you're gonna plug it in and you're gonna go and call for water so you can fill a cup of water and you're gonna cycle your ice maker. You're gonna to wanna to double check down in here and make sure you're not creating any kind of water leak or have water shooting out when you do the, the final test. 
because you're gonna wanna make sure that these lines, for some reason, are not either in there all the way or cracked or damaged in some way by testing both parts up front. So now what we're gonna do is plug it in, we're gonna push it back in position, make sure we got functionality going for water through the door and the ice maker working. So let's plug it in and move back around front. So now that we have the unit back in position, plugged in, turned on, ice maker has cycled. On this particular one, this ice maker was in position to cycle by itself, and so it did, but if you needed to actually test it yourself and force it to cycle, you're gonna go ahead and remove this cover, and under this cover you're gonna see ports that have letters associated with them. You can go ahead and go from T to N, install a jumper wire, depress and turn the light switch off, and watch it cycle until you hear it click. Once you hear it click, remove your jumper wire, and then go ahead and hold the light switch shut, and wait for it to cycle around, and call for water to fill. This one was in its position already, so I know it filled with water, because if I feel inside, I have water on my finger, because the ice tray is filled. I will let the customer know, and if it is your own home, you're gonna wanna dump out the first batch or two of ice, one, because it's a new ice maker, and two, because you just use your finger to test it for actually water getting to there. The other part you're gonna wanna check is in this unit, inside the French door up top is a water dispenser. Yours may or may not have the dispenser, but if it does, you're gonna wanna test there for water coming out so you know that you have water coming through both valves. And then at that point, you may, for your own benefit, pull the unit back out and double check that you don't have any type of leak behind it. Now that we're back to the front of the unit, we checked for water in the ice maker. We checked for water through the door or in this particular unit inside. We double checked for leaks. We have no leaks, we have water, and that will complete your repair for the valve. Thank you for watching another quality repair video brought to you by appliancevideo.com.